Well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today to honor the life of Eleanor Smith. She is such a special person and had such an incredible influence in so many. Um, clearly, many of you know that my name is not Pastor Jonathan Bonar. Um, <laughs> but um, if there was anyone's name that I would carry, it would be Jonathan's name. He is an incredible pastor and uh, grateful to have him here today as he officiates over this funeral. But on behalf of, my name is Oscar Soto, and on behalf of uh, Christ Fellowship and our pastors, we want to say, um, we want to express our deepest condolences to Eleanor's family and let you know that we love you, we're praying for you, and uh, it is an honor to be able to celebrate her life today. There is a scripture that I want to read to you from 2 Timothy chapter 4, and this is what it says. It is a beautiful scripture that I'm sure Eleanor is able to celebrate today. It says this, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, it is for all who eagerly look forward to him appearing. I know that today Eleanor is able to say that and celebrate that. And that's why we call it a celebration, because we are able to reflect on a beautiful life that was well lived, that encouraged many of us, that there were many investments that were made in our hearts. And today, as you celebrate, as you remember her life, I would encourage you to know that she would, what would she want you to do? I would encourage you to think about that. What would she want you to do? How would she want you to feel? What would she want you to say? And I'm sure she would want you to celebrate, to rejoice, to remember, to smile. But as you do, I know that sometimes those memories can be painful because loss of someone that you love is difficult. And I once heard a pastor say that we love, we, we cry so passionately because we love so deeply. And today, as you remember and you celebrate, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will comfort you like only he can today. Well, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate Eleanor Smith. And Lord, we pray that your comfort would rest over her loved ones, her family, friends that are here, those that are joining us, Lord, through the online video today. Lord, we pray, God, that you would be able to bless them, that they would be able to remember the investments that Eleanor made in their lives. And as they celebrate her today, Lord, may they feel the warmth of your love and your peace. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would bring your comfort in this place today. In Jesus' name.
is represented. My grandmother would be proud, and so would Liberace. <laughs> These past few weeks have been overwhelming, to say the least, and my family and I are so thankful to feel the love and support from the people in this room, to those around the world who wanted to be here, but are here in spirit. My grandmother was a lot of things. She was a wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, artist, performer, piano teacher, the Italian Betty White. <laughs> and most of all, she was a representation of an unconditional love that is often so hard to find in this world. Her faith and love for God came across in every aspect of her life. Whether she knew you only in passing or you were her friend for decades, she made you feel like you were the most important person for decades, I had become accustomed to people always asking how I was, and then the second question being, how's your grandmother? 
<laughs> Even if they had only met her once from years ago. I was literally just at a doctor's appointment like three weeks ago, and first, how are you doing? And even my own doctor, how's your, how's your grandma? It was really not that hard to fall in love with her when you met her. You could never let your eyes fool you, though. Her small stature and cute demeanor was just a front. In reality, she was a glitter-wearing giant of life, and sharper than most of us put together on our best day. She was one of the strongest women I had ever known, and one of the most influential. I was her knight in shining armor. <sighs> and we were inseparable. She was my biggest cheerleader, my duet partner, and one of the best role models I had in my life. She was the matriarch, the glue that held my family together, especially with the passing of my mother nine years ago. It is surreal being in the same building we said goodbye to my mom. I will never forget sitting next to my grandmother as we sat through the funeral, and she held my hand saying she would want us to pick ourselves up and keep living life, keep excelling, keep doing what we were put on this earth to do. Less than a year later, she would say the same thing to me as we buried the love of her life, my grandfather, after they had been married 61 beautiful years. She was able to live with Michael and I in LA for almost six months over the pandemic, which gave us memories I will cherish for my entire life. She gave myself and anyone who would listen advice, whether we asked for it or not. <laughs> she went to Juilliard and continued to teach piano over 65 years with teaching students up until the week before she passed. She found such joy in music and taught me piano from the age of four years old. She was part of the Morning Glories, a music group that performs at nursing homes throughout South Florida. At the ripe old age, I shouldn't say old, but the ripe age of 85, she would say she's going to go sing to the old people. <laughs> <laughs> we are lucky enough to have some of the members with us today, and they're gonna be singing later on. I also had fond memories of going to Copeland Davis piano concerts throughout the years with my grandmother. He was one of her all-time favorites. We are lucky enough to have Copeland here today and her all-time favorite possession, her Yamaha Grand Piano, which was brought here especially today in her honor for him to play for us today. She was the rock star, the one who made us all laugh, and the one who had a daily prayer list that included our family and friends. Her love of prayer was awe-inspiring. I would always joke with my friends that if you made that prayer list, you have no idea how blessed you were. <laughs> her faith and love for God was the rock of her life. She was one of the only people I knew who opened their minds outside of the norms they grew up with and embraced and accepted people no matter what gender, orientation, or religion. She truly embodied the mantra of, what would Jesus do? Her body was 92 years old, but she had the spirit and the mind of someone decades younger. She bought her first computer at 80, going to local college computer classes to learn how to send the email. <laughs> when told that she was crazy to be starting so late in life, she would say, no, I'm a revolutionary. She always wanted to be a doctor, but growing up in the 1930s was not really allowed to get a formal degree. But that didn't stop her from having a cameo as an internal medicine doctor on Grey's Anatomy and making sure that every doctor's appointment thereon included her taking out her Gray Sloan Memorial badge to show the entire office. <laughs> her capacity to love was rooted in her Christian faith. Her love for her family and friends knew no bounds. When my grandfather passed, she longed for the day that she would one day be reunited with him. She never feared death and strove to live life as though every day could be your last. I found it appropriate as she was about to take her last breath to play her wedding song, Too Young by Nat King Cole. In her own romantic and very dramatic ending, in this last chapter of her physical life, she made sure to have her last heartbeat be on the final chord of her wedding song. In case you haven't learned by now, my grandmother loved being dramatic. <laughs> and let me tell you that all the people that were with us on that morning when she passed can attest she knew how to make an exit. <laughs> My grandmother was never afraid of death. 
she and I would talk so candidly about it. In fact, almost everything you see today, she chose and made sure to document every detail. She knew when she drew her last breath on this earth exactly where she was going. She was going home to her heavenly father where she would be reunited with my grandmother, or my grandfather and mother. Looking back on all the heartache my family has gone through the past nine years, there were also so many triumphs. I believe when my mom died that my grandmother made a pact with God that she needed to be here to get my sister and I through those difficult years. She was there rooting for us as we got through medical and nursing school. She was there when we both married the loves of our life and started our own families. She was there when my sister had Sophia, Jackson, and Noah. She was there to help my dad when he forgot whether he ate that day or to answer the same question for the hundredth time. <laughs> she was there for it all through our journey through into adulthood, and we are so lucky for that. My grandmother had a mission to make sure my sister and I were both going to be okay. And I can tell you 100%, with 100% certainty, that she accomplished that mission. It's easy to shut down after such a consequential loss in our lives, but I know in the deepest depths of my heart that we must all follow my grandmother's lesson, that they would want us to pick ourselves up and keep living life, keep excelling, keep doing what we were put on this earth to do. And just for the record, you always, you will always be my enjoyment. So Blatchley, Eleanor was my father's sister. My favorite memory of Aunt Eleanor centered around my wedding in the 1970s in Maryland. I had invited some patients from a long-term care hospital where I volunteered. Years later, Aunt Eleanor told me that the sight of those patients on stretchers and wheelchairs that lined the church aisles had melted her heart, and it was during my wedding ceremony that she gave her heart to the Lord. After that, we always seemed to have a spiritual connection. I always marveled at how she spent her life sharing her faith and her musical talent with others. And so I thought it was fitting on that Sunday when I heard that she had passed, I was preparing to lead a Bible study at my church on heaven. And that week's topic was worship. I immediately pictured her in heaven, worshiping at the feet of Jesus after hearing, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. She certainly made the most of every breath she had, and she is a great example for us all. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be Very rarely do you meet somebody that leaves such an impression on you, and that will never go away. And now, it's our job to carry that, the memory of what an amazing, beautiful, elegant, impressive person that she was. I will never forget you, ever, or the, the few times that I was lucky enough to laugh with you. You are truly, truly missed. I was so blessed to know Eleanor. She was such an amazing woman and with an amazing sense of style. I got to spend my birthday and a couple of Christmases with her and she brought such joy to everyone that she was around. Um, also, Eleanor was there for me the day that my dog crossed the Rainbow Bridge. She held my hand and was really there and it really meant a lot to me. I'm really gonna miss her a lot. Hi everyone. Uh, we were very, very lucky to know Eleanor and spend quite a significant amount of time with her while she visited the Michaels here in Los Angeles, whether it was uh, playing an old show tune and showcasing her, her piano skills, uh, always lighting up every room she walked into. Uh, we were always so happy to see Eleanor and share her joy and pride in her, her grandson, Michael, who was her knight in shining armor, <laughs> right? Yeah, we will just miss 
you so much, Eleanor. And I'll just never forget spending alone time with you, removing your makeup, and you would just always say the most beautiful things. And the way that you would look at Michael, Michael would look at you, and the relationship that you had was just so beautiful. It was something just to be really admired. And we will miss you so, so much. And just what a remarkable, artistic, creative, wonderful human being. And we're just so happy that we got to know you in this time. And our hearts are with you guys. We love you so much. And um, you'll be so greatly missed, Eleanor. I am so wishing I could be there with you today. I am um, very grateful though that I got to spend such wonderful time around the piano with Eleanor, seeing her light and her presence and her tremendous energy. And all of that I see in you, Michael, so clearly. And I'm just so grateful that you facilitated our paths crossing. Sending all my love. Make a toast, my family, my two beautiful new grandchildren, and my wonderful friends that have been so wonderful to me, and my wonderful neighbors that take such good care of me. Yeah. And Freddie, he's my right arm. And I thank God for all the blessings that God's given me and my night is shining on my We just wanted to say we wish we could be there, but since we're not, we'd like to give our love and blessings to the family, to Michael, to Michael, and to everybody who is lucky enough to know Eleanor. What a great, inspiring artist she was. And that love and inspiration will be with me, I know, forever. I only got a chance to meet her a couple of times, but it was, uh, it was very powerful. So we love you, Michael and Michael, and thank you. Yeah, she was a bright, just so full of energy and vibrant color. And I'm so glad that everyone is asked to wear vibrant colors at her um, celebration of life because she was a vibrant presence um, for Michael and for everyone who knew her. On set and I just wanted to, of the hit show, Abbott Elementary, and I just wanted to say how much I appreciated and loved Eleanor and how she prayed for me to get this job because she knew how much I wanted it and how important it was to me. And she was a really wonderful presence for me when my mom was sick and how much energy she gave me and after my mom passed. And I really, really loved her and um, continued to love her and loved her with both my goals and what an incredible grandmother and mother figure she was to everyone. Rest in peace, Eleanor. Nana. We were lucky enough to meet Eleanor at several of Michael's dinner parties, and the, the impression she left was instant. She was the most spunky, spontaneous, fun, interesting, thirsty for life person in their 90s I have ever met. And uh, we wish we could be there to celebrate her life because she was an incredible person that I've had, we've had the privilege of having a few uh, meals and cocktails with. And we always looked forward to her coming to visit in LA and we wish we could be there to celebrate her, but we're sending our love and there will never be another lady like Eleanor. I mean, so she was incredible. She was generous. She was willing to teach anyone how to play the piano. She knew how to party and she will be missed very dearly. We send you all our love and wish we were there with you. Yes. Go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go back to sleep. I want to be 
Kiss my new perfume and nobody else but you. I want to be loved by you. Hello, I'm Copeland Davis, and I'm going to play for you um, Miss Ellen's favorite song that I played. It's one that she loved for me to do the most. I met her through um, a mutual friend of ours, Miss Edna Hibble. And that was how I got to know you, Michael. And this is her favorite. This is her piano. This is my honor to play on her piano. This is her piano, by the way. Because <laughs> her piano is in storage, right next to my piano, which is in storage, which is the same piano. <laughs> which I wanted to make sure. But uh, it would be like over the rainbow. She liked the rainbow. So. <laughs> Ready? <laughs>
to be here, and I want to thank you for making time to be here as well. I'm honored to, Michael, when you just said that uh, Eleanor had chosen everything, it, it brought tears to my eyes because <clears throat> I'm honored to be chosen to be here and to talk about Eleanor and to celebrate her life. For many years, I was privileged to be one of her pastors. And um, she, I feel like I'm more like family than a pastor. <laughs> Michael, uh, he, he's Mickle Michael to my kids because they couldn't say Mr. Michael. And uh, right on the other side of this wall is our children's ministry area. And every Sunday morning, every Saturday night, sometimes while he was in college, he would fly back on a red eye to come back and lead my kids and, and everybody else's kids in worship. And uh, Emily was also so faithful, serving constantly here at the church and serving in kids and doing so much. Oh, this is family. And so I'm honored on a deeper level than most times that I get to speak to, to be here. And I'm honored by Eleanor. I'm honored that you've taken time out of your day to be here and to comfort this family and to celebrate her life today. Eleanor did not just choose me, but she also talked about the, the service that I, I actually spoke at for her daughter, Cheryl. And so uh, I'm going to speak to you a little bit from the same passage that I spoke about Cheryl and celebrated her life, uh, because that's what Eleanor would want. She'd want us to look at this very same thing. And, and talking about family, I, I'm drawn to this passage on days like this because on my grandmother's passing, she asked for this uh, scripture to be read over her. And similar to Eleanor, as that scripture was being read, she took her last breath and passed on into eternity. And so this passage has very special meaning to me. Many of you know it. It's Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Sounds like Eleanor. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And look at this. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to welcome you to the celebration of Eleanor's life. Pastor Oscar said and talked to the family before we came out that this is a celebration. Eleanor would want it to be a celebration. I'm so glad that you guys are wearing crazy colors. This is, I think, the only time I've worn a jacket like this for a memorial service. I know the only time I've had an animal print pocket square. But I want to thank you for celebrating with us today. Even those of you watching by video uh, that couldn't be here and people touched by her life, thank you for spending a little bit of time and watching this video and being a part of this service and joining with us to celebrate such an amazing lady. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask as we look at your scriptures, we ask that you would fill this family with hope with grace, with joy, that you fill our hearts, these friends that are gathered here that are mourning the loss of such a wonderful, wonderful lady. Lord, would you, as we look into your word, would you give us courage to face the future? Would you give us joy in the midst of our sorrow? Would you bless this precious family, these grandkids and great-grandkids, Lord? Pour your presence into them, and as we gather around your word, inspire us to live differently, to live a little bit more like Eleanor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I want to talk to you about what I think Eleanor would say to us if she could come and speak to us today. I think if Eleanor was here, she'd say, don't cry too much for me. Because these truths in Psalm 23, they apply to me. I think they would, she would say, number one, don't cry too much for me because I have a wonderful shepherd. Verse one says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> Sounds like Eleanor. Eleanor chose Jesus as her savior, as her shepherd. In the 70s, she had been walking with Jesus longer than many of us had been alive. She had had this shepherd guiding her, comforting her, walking with her for many, many years. I'm not talking about organized religion. I'm talking about a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus that changes everything. You know, most of the people involved in organized religion didn't care too much for our Savior Jesus. And he even agrees. <laughs> Noah's even agreeing with me. Is that Noah that he cried out? Yes. Yeah. I think she'd say, I'm not talking about organized religion. I'm talking about a shepherd. <laughs> I'm talking about a savior named Jesus. And I think maybe if you're here, you don't attend church or you're watching right now this service and maybe you don't attend church. I think Eleanor would want to say, feel at home because church isn't a building that you walk into. It's a family that you belong to. And she would want you to feel like family. So even if you came in here and you felt a little awkward because you're like, I don't normally go to church or I don't do this often. Or maybe you're even watching saying, I, I don't go to church often. I think Eleanor would want you to feel like family today. So don't feel out of place. Eleanor would want you to feel at home. She had such a relationship. Like Michael said, she prayed for me during stage four cancer when I nearly died. And I think she, her prayers are probably one of the reasons I'm alive today to do this, to stand before you. She was a prayer warrior. Maybe you're watching this video because Eleanor touched your life. As the producer that Michael is, he set up three different cameras in the room because just one or two angles is never enough, right? It's got to be three that you can get the full scope of everything going on. I want you to know that uh, that's a sign, if you're watching this video, of how much this family cares about you. Because you might be all over the world in different places and couldn't be here. And this family wants you to feel like family. We want you to understand that when the Lord is your shepherd, you do not want. John 10, 10, Jesus is teaching. The shepherd is teaching. He says this, I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. He adds to that. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Eleanor lived a full life. She didn't seem to want for anything. She had a shepherd, even on the hard days, that filled her with joy and love and life. You ever open a bag of your favorite chips? And you open it up and you're immediately depressed to find that most of what you purchased was air. <laughs> and, and that's what a, a, a life that's lacking feels like. But when you look at Eleanor's life, it is full. And Jesus said, I came to give you a full life, not a trouble-free life, but a full life. That even on the bad days, you can sing your favorite song. You can impact other people with your love and your joy. You can change other people's lives. You can sing for the old people. <laughs> Eleanor lived a full life, overflowing with joy and happiness. I think she'd say, don't cry too, too much for me today because I have a wonderful shepherd that cared for me all the days of my life. I think number two, she'd say, don't cry too much for me because I've lived a blessed life. If you look at what David writes as being a former shepherd before he was a king, look at what he writes in verse two. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, verse 5. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I think she would say, don't cry too much for me because I've really lived a wonderful life that a lot of people don't get to enjoy. A lot of people don't get to enjoy all the years that she got to enjoy. What's funny about when David writes, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He's assuming or referring to us as sheep. And what we know from shepherds and, and, and people who, who actually care for sheep is that sheep are literally some of the dumbest animals on the planet. And over and over again in scripture, we're referred to as sheep, right? It's like, and I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm with them. I'm a sheep. And what's interesting about what David says is he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. I think it's important you slow down there for a minute and understand what David is saying. You see, sheep are so dumb that when they are in a green pasture, we're told by shepherds that they will continue eating until their stomachs burst and they kill themselves. And one of the jobs of the shepherd is to go around with that staff that you would see and just kind of nudge the sheep over to fall over so they'll stop eating and they'll lay down and fall asleep. And I think that is a great analogy for most of us today. We live hurry, busy lives, just consuming, 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 filling our lives with many things that sometimes aren't important. But if you're like me, I need someone to just shove me over and say, stop. Pause. This is a day. This is a time where Eleanor has asked us all to just stop for a moment and relish in what an amazing life, what a great green pasture you are blessed with. Eleanor was blessed with a loving family. True friends, most important thing to her, not her riches, not even her piano. <laughs> if you're around Eleanor, she knew people were the most important things in her life. She recognized her green pasture. She enjoyed 61 years, if you didn't hear Michael attest to it, 61 years of marriage to Rod. She's got amazing kids, Michael and Emily, that she loved dearly. And I was talking with Michael, and, and he said one of the things that I want to make sure Emily hears this. One of the things he read in her diary was that she wrote, I love both of my grandkids equally <laughs> without favoritism. <laughs> She's so proud of you too. She's so blessed by her great grandkids. Sophia, Jackson, and Noah, you have an amazing great grandmother that's given you a rich legacy. She's lived a blessed life. She's blessed with true friends, the morning glories that are here with us today that she loved to impact the world with and change people's lives and brighten their days. People here who are watching on video that can't be here with us, our Christ Fellowship family that's here, and many people in the community that are just precious friends and family members. I think she'd say, don't cry too, me for, too, for, too much for me because God has led me to peace and righteousness. She blessed others with unselfish, kind, accepting acts of grace and love. That's what marked her life. She didn't think too much of herself, but even when she was having hard days, she would be trying to serve other people. As a young pastor, she always loved me and encouraged me. I remember, I remember to this day the place that she would sit in our main worship center because I would always try to somehow snake my way through before service or after to actually run into her because she would always brighten my day. She would always encourage me and love on me. 
And I can still see that seat where I would go and hope to see her sitting there. I think, Pastor Oscar, you got to embroider Eleanor's name on that seat so other people know. If they sit there, they have to be a ball of joy and love. They're not allowed to sit there unless they fill that seat with love. One of the things that I saw that Michael wrote about his grandmother was that she cast a net of love. I love that language because it reminds me of what Jesus said. He said to these two fishermen that he was recruiting people who were actually marginalized by the rest of society. If you know the education system, that means they were kicked out. If they were fishermen, they were kicked out of education and had to go back to their father's trade and learn that. And so he actually goes to them to pick them. And he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. We just saw a tribute on video of all kinds of people that were impacted by Eleanor because she cast a net of love over people. She was a fisher of men and women that people would love her because of the way she actually lived out the love of our Savior Jesus, her shepherd. Scripture also says there, you prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. I love that language because preparing a table is ancient language for a feast, putting out a party. That's one of the reasons we do this as a celebration and we're all wearing bright colors and animal prints and this casket is even pink. I love that. We celebrate, but it's in the midst of our enemies. You see the Christian life following Jesus as your shepherd isn't the guarantee of a trouble-free life. In fact, he actually tells his disciples, you're going to have trouble, but fear not, I have overcome the world. The Christian life of following Jesus, like Eleanor has, is actually the decision to actually have a party in the midst of your enemies. On the good days, on the bad days, those things don't impact the way you love people and the way you love your God and the joy that fills your life, it's not attached to your circumstances. It's attached to your shepherd. David says, you prepare a table. You put out a party when I'm surrounded by problems and enemies. And I think that describes Eleanor. Any room Eleanor walked into was a party. <laughs> It was a celebration. Goodness and mercy will follow me, David says. All the days of my life. Michael told me that many times they would be driving with, with her in the car and they would pull into a parking lot and she would just start praying, Lord, give us a parking space. Give us a good parking space. <laughs> Even the little things she prayed about, like parking spaces. And he said every single time they would turn around a corner and there would be this amazing parking space there <laughs> waiting for them. You might not get those parking spaces now. <laughs> Goodness and mercy followed her. She lived to 90, over 90 years. It's amazing. I think the third thing she'd say, don't cry for me too much because death could not touch me. Death couldn't put a finger on her. In fact, what you heard from Michael is he said she kind of almost in a rebellious attitude, not rebellious, he didn't say this, but I'm adding this flavor to it, <laughs> that she actually said, I'm going to choose the very chord that my heart stops at in the song. Her life wasn't taken from her. She passed through a valley that we all must pass through. Look at what scripture says. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The family shared earlier that she wasn't afraid of death. Because it wasn't a destination. It's just a passing through place. It's a valley that every single one of us have to prepare ourselves to walk through. Every single one of us. Benjamin Franklin said, the only things I can guarantee you is death and taxes, right? Unless the Lord comes back before it's our time, we're all going to pass through that same valley. 
death did not even lay a finger on her. It says here in scripture, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when you belong to the shepherd, the only thing that death can do is cast its shadow on you while you're passing through. She was comforted. She was never alone. She was with her heavenly father immediately, we're told from scripture. Rod was probably right, waiting right there. He probably said, what took you so long? <laughs> Psalm 116 says this, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. That was hard for me to understand until I spoke to a maternity nurse here locally, right here in Royal Palm. I was talking with her about what a baby goes through on the day it's born. And she said, actually, Pastor, it's probably fortunate that none of us can remember our birth. Because she said, if we could remember it, we would need years, maybe decades of professional counseling to get over what happens to a baby. And she went through all the details of what they do to a baby as soon as it's born, how it's just ripped out of its comfort place and it's going through all kinds of stuff. I don't actually think doctors spank the baby, but they do kind of get them to breathe and maybe they do. Michael, you could answer that question for all of us. But what, what we know goes on is horrible, tragic, it's traumatic. And yet, we as parents celebrate our kids' birthdays every year. <laughs> What's interesting, I have pictures of me hovering over each of my three kids that call Michael, Michael, Michael. And I'm hovering over them when they were born in that little incubator thing, whatever that's called. I'm sure there's a medical name. And I didn't have Michael edit my script, so I don't know what that medical name is. But... Well, what what I, I do know is that I'm, I got pictures of me over them just in awe of these kids that are going through the most traumatic thing of their life. I love them dearly. And, and they're probably just traumatized. You know why? Because it's precious to me because I know it's not the end. It's the beginning of an awesome life. And I walked away from that maternity nurse conversation saying, that's why the death of his saints is something precious. What we view on this side of eternity is something tragic. But what he views on his side of eternity is something amazing and precious because it's not the end. It's the beginning. This is just a dress rehearsal for the main event. <laughs> My kids and I lived here for many years for while they were young. And, and, and when we did, we would go to Disney World a lot. And one of the things we learned to do is the end of your Disney trip is so sad. And they even play sad music at the gate when you're walking out. Like you wanna, you're, you're just depressed walking away. The kids are crying and depressed, they gotta leave. The parents are crying and depressed. They spent so much money. <laughs> It's just sad. So we would always pause on the way into the park to actually stop for a moment and realize, wait, guys, we're at the beginning. We're not at the end. I want to encourage your hearts. Eleanor is at the beginning. She's not at the end. And that's why her death is precious to her shepherd. The last thing we read here in Psalm 23 says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I think she'd say, don't cry too much for me because I am in paradise. No timeshare in Cancun can come close. No condo in Maui even comes close. She's probably already sitting before the throne playing the piano and leading in worship, wearing red or a leopard. She's probably upgraded the wardrobe of heaven considerably already. And she's probably playing the piano, at least until Copeland, maybe she better get ready. When you get there, you might take over the job possibly. That was amazing. 
but she is in a place of bliss and happiness. She's reunited with her husband. She's with her shepherd, with her savior. So I want to encourage your heart. Revelation 21, three says, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Look at this, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. The things we don't like about this world will someday come to an end and everything will be made right. Eleanor's there. In conclusion, I want to encourage you. I, I kind of view life like this buffet where you go along and you see different kinds of food and, and you're like, I, I don't think I want any of that, but oh man, I want some of this. You take a little sliver of this pie and really your life and who you end up being is really kind of just a pie made up of a lot of slices of other people that have impacted your life and, and changed you. And so I would invite you that these things that we've been talking about Eleanor today intentionally say, I'm going to live differently because of what I was blessed with. I got to spend time with Eleanor. She impacted my life. And so consciously take a little sliver of Eleanor's joy and happiness and the way she just unconditionally loved people. And say, I'm going to put that into my life. I'm going to live a little bit more like Eleanor. I'm going to earn a little bit of what I was blessed with and being her friend, being blessed with having her as a grandma, as a great grandma. I think Jesus said this in John 10, 10, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. Speaking of the people in front of him that were following him, speaking of us says, I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Speaking of heaven. One thing I want to make sure that Eleanor would want us to just give an opportunity to is if you are here or you're watching right now on video and you say, I love the, the, the parts of Eleanor that impacted my life. That's really the impact of God and Jesus, her savior on her that transformed her. I think she would want you to have the very same savior, the very same shepherd. So I don't know that there's any finer way to honor her than actually say, you know what, Eleanor, I'm gonna trust in your same shepherd as my savior. And if you're here today and you're saying, I don't know if I'm gonna make it to heaven, she would want you to know. She would want you there with her. And so I want to give you an opportunity to actually place your own personal faith in that same shepherd today. Because I think there is no better way to honor Eleanor than to choose that part of her faith. The way she loved people. And place that into your life. John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not about what church you go to. It's not about how much money you give away to the poor. It's not about all the good things or bad things you do. It's about faith, whoever believes. So maybe today is your day. Maybe God orchestrated everything so you could be touched by Eleanor's life so that you would be here today or you would be watching right now this service because God's reaching out to you today. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes, even if you're watching this anywhere in the world today. Bow our heads and close our eyes. If you're here, you need to place your faith in Jesus. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. It's not some kind of mystical, magical Mantra, it's not anything special, it's just a heartfelt prayer. Just pray this in your heart. If you don't know for sure if you're going to heaven and you want to choose Jesus as your Savior, just pray this in your heart. Repeat this after me. Just say, Dear God, forgive me. I've sinned against you. Today I place my faith 
in your son Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior, as my shepherd. I commit my life to you from this moment forward as best as I know how. I will live to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you to do me one favor. If you prayed that prayer with me and trusted Christ as your Savior, please let Michael or Emily know today before you walk away. So when you see them after this time together, if you made that decision, prayed that prayer, please do me the huge favor of actually taking a moment while you're, while you're actually greeting them or caring for them that you just say, Michael, Emily, today's my day. And they'll know what you're talking about. I think we have a great thing to celebrate in Eleanor's life. And may we pray God's peace to rest on this precious family. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's pray for this family. Heavenly Father, Lord, we gather our hearts around your throne and around this family. Lord, would you, would you pour your grace and your love and your joy into them? Lord, we pray that the memories of Eleanor would be just refreshed and renewed, especially in these great grandkids here today. Lord, we thank you for blessing this family with such a strong, loving, kind matriarch, full of joy and life. Lord, in turn, we ourselves ask that you help us to live with that same joy and life and unconditional love for others. Bless us. Bless this family. Help them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to be blessed to have the morning glories are going to sing one song that is Eleanor's choice as the family processes out today.